Hello and welcome back to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at organic chemistry and we're going to be looking at chlorination of alkanes by the mechanism known as free radical substitution. So by the end of this session you should be able to do the following. Explain the reaction of an alkane with chlorine as a free radical substitution mechanism involving initiation, propagation and termination steps. So what is a radical? Well, let's take an example of chlorine, Cl2, which is got a covalent bond and a shared pair of electrons. If we somehow break that covalent bond and each electron goes back to its original molecule, or atoms I should say, we end up with this situation. Each of these atoms now has a lone electron and therefore it wants to react because there's seven electrons in its outer shell. One of them isn't paired up and these become very reactive species and we draw a chlorine radical or a radical denote it with a dot to show the lone electron. So the chlorine radical described by that. And because we've broken a chlorine molecule, we now have two chlorine radicals from one chlorine molecule. And we'll see in due course that in order to do that, we have to put energy in, and that tends to be in the form of UV light. So a radical is a atom with a lone electron. Now, because these radicals are so reactive, they will react with what are otherwise very stable things. And we'll see how that happens when we look at the reaction between methane, CH4, along with chlorine, using UV light to start the reaction off to make chloromethane and hydrogen chloride, or HCl. This goes via a radical mechanism, and for that reason we're substituting one of the hydrogens for a chlorine atom, and so it's a free radical substitution. And it occurs in three steps. We have the initiation step, and in the initiation we have the formation of radicals. So our example here would be we have Cl2, as we've just seen, and this could be any halogen, but we tend to see it with chlorine, but it equally could be bromine, fluorine, or iodine. With the addition of UV light, we get the dissociation, or the breaking up of the chlorine into the two chlorine radicals that we talked about before, with one free electron per chlorine an unpaired electron. Once that chlorine radical is formed, that can go on and propagate, that is, make other radical species by simply reacting, bouncing into, colliding with other molecules. And the other molecules we've got around are likely to be, well, we could have methane. And in propagation steps, we always have a neutral molecule or an along with a radical and we will form on the other side propagation another radical and we tend not to get hydrogen radicals in these reactions so we end up with HCl as a neutral molecule and a radical. Another possibility is we could have that methyl radical CH3 for example could react with another chlorine Cl2 molecule to make another radical and in doing so we make again the chloromethane and we regenerate another radical. Propagation then always has a radical and a neutral molecule and always makes a radical and another neutral molecule. The final step then is termination. 
termination being the removal or the loss of the chlorine of the radicals, in this case chlorine. And the yeast is always when we have two radicals to come together to make a neutral molecule. So there's a variety of possible uh, termination steps. We could simply have a reverse of our initiation. If it happened that we had two chlorine radicals come together, we'd come back to make a chlorine molecule. Not very useful in this particular reaction, but of course with the UV light that would simply be generated again. We could have termination with one of the methyl radicals coming with a chlorine radical to make our chloromethane that we talked about before. Or we could have two methyl radicals to come together and this is quite nice because if they come together we end up with a longer carbon chain to make an ethane or C2 H6. Each of these note that there's two radicals coming together to make an overall neutral molecule. And that step is called a termination step. That is the free radical substitution and we'll see how that is very important later on when we look at things like ozone depletion. Finally, then, we're just going to look at that general equation. We said this could be for methane, this could be equally for ethane or propane, or any organic species. For every atom that we want to substitute, we will use one molecule of chlorine and generate one molecule of the hydrogen chloride. So if we just look at, for example, ethane, let's say, and this time we were going to substitute it with bromines. But we didn't want to just do one substitution. We wanted to do, let's say, four substitutions. Our overall reaction, with UV light again to do the formation of the radical, is going to produce a HBr for each of the substitutions and we would end up with C2 H2 Br3. Perhaps we could have another example here. Let's do a simple one again. That's methane. And we just wanted to do three substitutions with chlorine. Again, UV light used here to make three substitutions plus three of the HCLs, if we're trying to write balanced equations. So finally, we'll just check what we've done in this lesson. You should be able to explain the reaction of an alkane with chlorine as a free radical substitution mechanism involving initiation, propagation, and termination steps. We will also look at chlorofluorocarbons and how they deplete the ozone layer. We'll do that in a separate lesson. Bye-bye for now.